hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. We're going to be drawing a map today. Uh, camera angle's a little wonky. Let me see if I can fix that. Uh, uh, Alright. Uh, so, I got everything I need to get started on my map. I got my sweet-ass number two pencil. A lot of paper. List of places that need to go on the map for plot reasons. Uh, I got some sweet-ass tunes. Uh, which you should now be able to hear. And hopefully nothing bad happens as a result. Uh, so yeah, let's get started on this. I typically do stuff in paper and pencil first to get like a rough idea. And then I take whatever like design I have and I move it over to my vector art programs. Because I'm not actually like an artist. So drawing is hard. Uh, so I get like a pencil sketch going. And then I use the power of computers to get me the rest of the way there. So a uh, couple of considerations. So this is for Necropolis, which is a, a city built on the bones of a dead titan, right? So like, this is the titan's head. And we got like the rib cage over here. And then he fell down with his arms up like this, right? So... I'm drawing this kind of small, but this is just, I need to get an idea of what the shape of the district I'm working on is, which is the meat market, which is uh, where a lot of commerce takes place in the undead city. So the meat market's round about here, but there's also a blood orchard right here. And then in my mind, the rest of the city is sort of portioned up into districts, kind of like this. Sort of like wedge shapes. Like that. So this is like a rough sketch. Which means that like our district that we're going to be working on is kind of like... And you got this big old gate shape like that, right? And then it's sort of like... This is the edge of the district. And then like this is the other edge like that. Right? But then like... And this is, we're going to dial this in later. This is just for me to get an idea. So that's the uh, blood orchard side of things, right? So this is, this is kind of crookedy, but you get the idea. Oh, uh, yeah. So let's blow this up a little bit. So this is like the inner contours of the wall. And then there's a big old gate structure right here. So... Work off that and get something a little bigger. So the Blood Orchard is kind of like a walled off area. Uh, it's kind of like a fortress. You can't let people in and out of the place where you do all of your evil blood magic. Let's see if I have anything in here about it. We also have to come up with um, what each individual place looks like but i think i want to get the general structure first all right so we got like and again this is very very rough sketches basically i know that if i have something that looks half decent on paper i can make it look amazing when i turn it into vector art right So this is the, sort of like the, this is the arm of the Titan, right? Like up here. So that needs to come out to right here. This is why pen and pencil is my preferred methodology. So I can just... Whoop. Super rough sketches. And this is actually, so this line right here is just a border. Like, so this is just another district. But when we zoom in on the, uh, man, I look like a serial killer with that angle. Like, look like the Joker. Mm. All right, let's try something different here. How about... 
drop it down like this. Get like a sweet wide angle shot and get the underbeard as well. All right. This way when I lean forward, hopefully it looks relatively decent. Na, 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 na. All right. So we got this to line up. And this is another Titan arm. So this is like a real actual wall, whereas this is just sort of a boundary line. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is like an actual, this is the city wall. And so is that. And this is the uh, boundary line here, right? The skull's back this way. So there are most likely roads going to each of the other districts, right? Like there's probably a road that goes from the gates themselves. Very rough sketches. These roads are probably going to be closer together than that, so let's... You know, if, like, this part of it, you just kind of have to relax and uh, be okay with redoing stuff. Because, again, this is just a process sketch. Like, what you want to accomplish here is something that you can work off of when it comes time to vectorize it. Because what I present to my players is going to be a, basically a JPEG, right? But a city is a complicated thing, so it has to kind of make sense. I mean, it doesn't actually have to make that much sense. There's a ton of magical cities that make zero sense. For example, have you ever looked at a map of Ravnica? Bananas. This was a trick I learned on the internet, actually. So basically what we're going to do here is uh, this is probably some sort of square area. Uh, so I had this idea for I wanted the doors to be part of the map. Like, they're just so fucking big. Like, this Titan's arms are, like, miles across, right? Like, its arm is, like, five miles from elbow to wrist. Uh, so these doors are going to be, like, the size of fingers, which means they're about a mile long, which is a ridiculously huge door. Uh, so I think they probably don't close the doors very often, but they'd probably be, like, yay big. Like, comically large doors. Right? So if the door is like that, and it closes like that, let me sort of put it out this way. You can have it sweep back like that. Alright. So I think... Uh, the central attraction here has got to be, well, this doesn't really make a lot of sense to me because we have this road, like, so there's a central marketplace called the stalls where all of the, like, incoming product gets, like, processed by, uh, Undead. But, uh, I don't think it would be right here. Like, un Undead are hungry, so it's probably going to be up here somewhere. Uh, and also, I want to put the stalls up here. Uh, because I want, like, if a dramatic thing happens and the doors need to close, I want them to, like, destroy the market stalls on their way out. Uh, just for extra flavor. I 
All right, so we're going to say that the market stalls are around here. sort of raises the question of what would be at the center here. And this is where a list can be handy. Yo, yeah, I shaved my beard. Uh, I don't know if I'm going back. I'm going to be real with you. Uh, not having a beard has been extremely convenient. How long did it take you to figure out who I was? <laughs> All right. Okay. It also needs to be a gate station up here. So we'll put like a gate station question mark. I like the idea that the gate station is uh, it's just immediately like you get through the bureaucracy of getting into the city and then it's immediately like what's for sale. I feel like that's fairly accurate. All right. Uh, yeah, no, I uh, the first day that I cut my hair and shaved my beard, I had to I made sure that I wore a staff shirt to work even though I didn't need to because I was working in the back just because I didn't want people to not know who I was or wonder why I was wandering around in the back of the end games. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, if you have a lot of hair on your face and head, I highly recommend uh, not having that. Uh, I've changed my life significantly for the better. All right. I also feel like maybe this is too simplistic a structure. I also think it would be interesting if there's like no way to get to the blood orchard from the main gate. Like you have to go through the cranium because uh, this right here is the head of a Titan, right? Where powerful and rich people live. Uh, and it sort of like drips blood down here to the blood orchard, like referring to the original document. Uh, I should just draw like a really big reference of what the hell I'm talking about, right? So this is like going to be a stick figure level drawing. Focus camera, focus. Right. So there's a rib cage back here. And the shoulder is like here. And the arm comes out like that. Right. And the Titan fell down on his face like this. All the way to the corner and then back so this forms the walls of the city uh, right and then the blood orchard is right around it's just like a walled off garden right here and the place we're dealing with is like this slice and the city is sort of like divided into districts from there I haven't really figured out how I want the districts to divide yet but this is the area that we're focused on. So that's the meat market, right? Going back to the original drawing. So this is like a blown up version of that. All right. Dude, the pretzel rocks may have to, uh, I don't know how I feel about it. Let me know if the, uh, chat's getting repetitive with what song's playing i don't even know if that's a thing i can adjust i literally just picked the first music option that i saw that was not too much of a pain in the ass all right so we got stalls over here all right i think varying up the roads will be interesting as well if we have another one sort of over here that's kind of how it works actually um, so referring back to the original document so like it's built on the body of a titan like basically picture like neck head and these are the arms right like they fell down like this and there's a city inside here, right? 
So um, the meat market is, for logistical reasons, it's a fairly prosperous area because it's right next to the only door in or out. So all of the, like, economic stuff happens there. So you got, like, a decent mix of people. And then uh, other districts further away are more, like, logistical or... um, how do I say this? Governmental in nature is like second order, third order uh, economy stuff. So there's like a, a industrial area. And then there's a place where uh, a lot of the higher level like bureaucracy happens. And then the actual like people who have money and power live in the head. Like they live in the cranium of the Titan. Uh, and uh, some people who are pretty ballsy live on the spine as well. And then inside the rib cage is actually a dock uh, because the rib cage is in the ocean, which I will all eventually draw. But right now, my party is they're um, they're police officers basically. Like if you've ever watched uh, Terry Pratchett guards guards, it's like a unwilling cop situation. Like they do not want to be police because it's not safe to be a police officer in an undead city. Uh, so they are assigned to the meat market. So we got to draw that. We can get to the rest of it when we get to it. But once we have like a rough idea, we basically just need enough roads that you can get everywhere in the city. uh, And then draw out the rest. Yeah, no, I'm a big fan. I made up on Dead Quest when I was about your age, Glor. And I've been running it on and off uh, pretty much my whole life. All right. I also feel like, uh, hmm, how do I say this? I want the roads to be more windy, but I don't really know how to accomplish that because I'm not an artist. So I think, uh, while it makes sense to have these, like, straight lines going from place to place, I definitely want to do some weird spirals. This is all right. We're gonna we're gonna not do that. As much as I would like to do another branch, I feel like we're already dangerously close to a swastika, and I'm not about that life. So just to give you an example of how like this typically works, so we do like a bunch of interestingly shaped buildings back here, right? Like some of these. Uh, we'll get some polygons going and these are like unnamed buildings like this does not have to be like that and you can do like another building over here like that and then what you do at the end is you erase the roads that we drew and leave the buildings and the negative space of the uh, buildings sort of creates the road, if that makes sense. So basically we draw city streets and then draw buildings around the roads. Then we erase the roads and we end up with a city. But first we've got to draw buildings. So this area is approximately like The entire city is like 10 miles across. It's gigantic, comically large. And this area is like a tenth of a mile across. So this is more or less like the downtown mall plus uh, downtown mall plus or minus, basically. But unlike the downtown mall, it is tightly packed. So think like old school Jerusalem, like buildings stacked on top of each other, people living on top of each other, just... um, Exactly what you would expect from a bunch of undead building a fortress city to survive the apocalypse. Uh, all right. So there also has to be a warehouse district around here somewhere for plot reasons. And I feel like that would be 
relatively close. Dude, we haven't even got to the Undercity yet. Uh, there is an Undercity. I don't know if there's going to be a map for it. I feel like it's... Like, the city is already gnarly enough that, like, the Undercity for Necropolis is going to be bananas. Uh, let's see here. I wonder if I can get, like, an organic design in here. Like, uh... Dude, it's been so long since I put pen to paper. Like I'm sure, I'm sure Mr. Glor or uh, Glorfindax is just cringing right now with these terrible drawing skills. Is this even gonna work? Graph paper is a good idea. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, that's I should have thought of that. I literally just grabbed the paper that was like nearby. Okay, I don't like the spiral. The spiral must die. Okay, so this is the part of the. Uh, sequence where will is stumped on how to move forward and we uh because we are not purists we can use references so let me set up a uh window capture and we'll go ahead and look at some gnarly ass cities all right na, 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 na. more organic branches off of that. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out, let's see here. What the, uh, what the branches are gonna look like and what's gonna look good. So I'm literally like, just gonna do a little cheaty face McGee over here. What should we look up that's going to have good city maps? Yeah! Uh, I saw you send me a friend request, and I was like, hell yeah. Anyone who plays RP... Honestly, I think your character is, like, one of the best ones on there. I really like the choices you make. The accent is killer. I'm a big fan. I'm not going to lie. Uh, your, uh, of course, Gamer Share from the Ladies of D&D podcast. They do a really well-produced, really well-graphically designed uh, D&D game on the regular and i think i'm actually gonna be uh i'm gonna be playing on it in may so that'll be fun all right city map i feel like this is not going to help kowloon walled city probably doesn't have a top-down map that is useful actually kind of does Ooh. yo So, it is 100% okay to use references and just straight up steal stuff for a D&D game. Uh, if you didn't know this already, I'm telling you now. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, these buildings are, like, back to back. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, look at how these buildings are, like, snug with each other. Like, these are probably alleyways, but, yeah. All right, I like this. Let's look at Whiterun. Yeah, this is more of like an organic, uh, like medieval city type thing. Whereas I'm envisioning more of like a uh, turn of the century, horrible metropolis, right? 
It does have the walls, though. The advantage I have over the designers of White Run is that uh, I don't have to render it it's such that a player can walk through it and not get super lost. Uh, so they can literally just roll to not be lost. All right, so I think Kowloon Walled City is what's up. Okay, so this is like we get a lot of loops. All right, let me save this. I'm literally just gonna add it to the uh, the stream as an image so that I can just reference it. One second while I get that going. So it should look something like that. So yeah, lots of roads going to different districts, like multiple ones and then like crazy, uh, nonsensical like branches and stuff. There also isn't like a main road that cuts through anything, which I think is going to be the only difference for the purposes of our map, because like it is a fortress city with like a pseudo military industrial complex. Uh, so they do have to have a main road to get stuff done. Uh, so let's think about what that would look like. Bring my microphone over. Okay. So this is the main gate, right? And then we got the foundry is probably over that way. And as far as like logistics go, that's pretty much it. Everything else is brought to them. So there's going to be one big ass main road. Sort of curves off this way. And a little caveat on what I was saying earlier. Like, if you are doing a private D&D &D game just for funsies with your friends, you should 100% plagiarize everything you can. The only litmus test is, are your players going to get the reference and be bummed out that they are playing Naruto, the role-playing game? If you avoid that, you have succeeded as a dungeon master. However, if you are making content for the internet and for entertainment for profit, don't plagiarize, don't steal. Cite your sources. Uh, just wanted to make sure that that distinction was super clear. Alright. Alright, on Dead Quest. Necropolis. This is all the main road you get. The rest of this is going to be bananas. Alright. Love that. Okay, so it looks like this. This road kind of goes out this way. And this is, like, going to be the main artery of the city, right? And then we're going to add to that. Let's see. Ah, it's so janky. Yeah, so this is going to be a handout for my players because this will eventually be their beat. Like, this is... They are... Uh, essentially the town guard for this area. Uh, it should be noted that the actual power in this city district is divided amongst a bunch of gangs. Uh, and they're really like a band-aid for that. But they're also like the main characters of a story. So if they want to make a difference, they can. They're just starting off as like four people versus like however many gangs it takes to run this district. Uh, so we will go like this. Okay, so there's like random... I'm going to make this a little bigger so that I can see it with my old man eyes. Bring it over here. I'm trying to hit the perfect balance of I can see this, but also you guys can see. So random jaggedy. So I actually kind of nailed it on this one because there are there's 100% like random little uh, alleyways that just kind of stop. So 
if I was going to draw some buildings to like understand how this is going to work better, we do like that. So this is a building. And then on the back of that building, there's another building like this that connects to this row. Right, so then we'll erase the roads and we'll have these like really tight buildings. All right. All right, so this road goes like this. And then we're going to say for no reason at all, it kinks like this because that's how the roads work. And then just when you think it's going to get to the other road, it goes like this instead. There are no, also, uh, <laughs> you get one horse, one cart, and one main road. That's all you get is, uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I feel like that's as twisted as we can make this road without it beggaring disbelief, right? Okay. So we got like a rough idea of what we're doing here. Okay, let's try and get one of those like, I, like, I love those cross structures they have. So you have like another road it goes like this, and then it connects to this road like three times in three different places, and then again, and we'll have it like curve up here. All right, let's see. And then we can have this one curve back. I just, I'm in love with the idea of a spiral road, even though that makes zero sense. I just really want there to be a spiral where there's no business having a spiral there. All right, so there's some, probably something important right here, huh? All right. This is the part of the stream where I get real quiet and just draw rows. So make sure you light up the comments and give me something to talk about. The rest of this is going to be figuring out where the roads go. Big gathering spot. So my plan for that is um, basically to have like, so there are market stalls up here where like the, uh, incoming like stuff to the city gets distributed and that's more of a like a tent city like uh bazaar type situation as far as gathering points this city has um like restaurants clubs gambling spots i actually have a whole list of things that need to go into the city uh for plot and other reasons so there's like 12 key points that i'm going to be adding in uh, that I should probably get started adding in, actually. Uh, for example, one of them is like a giant whale that they've dragged all the way over here and turned into a restaurant. So that's going to be that's gonna be something. Uh, let me see. Where would they put that? Well, it comes from the dock, right? So it'd have to come over here. So the most logical place for a giant whale to be would be like... Right here. Bring that up a little bit. Made a very crude two minute, two minute MS Paint rendition. That's basically what I'm going to be doing at the end of this. Uh, once I've got a basic document to work on. I just use vector graphics. Right. 
somebody's sending me something. I wish there was a way to just copy paste the images directly into Streamlabs. Where to go? All right, so this is what Glore made, uh, which is basically like dividing up the city into sections, right? Which I like what you did there, and uh, in a different campaign, I would use this. But so when you think about the history of this city, which is it was a normal city and then a titan fell on it and then a bunch of undead rebuilt it for their own purposes uh it they probably did not have time or the ability to plan like large-scale meeting places slash maybe that wasn't as high a priority what i'm saying is like for my aesthetic i want it to be more like a kowloon walled city and less like a logical place if that makes sense i do like this though Yeah, Undead Quest. Uh, 500 years ago, some brave adventurers tried to stop a necromancer from ending the world and causing an undead apocalypse, and they failed. Welcome to Necropolis. Uh, let's see here. So let's start. I'm actually going to put this away for a second. I'm going to work on a uh, visual key for the elements that need to go into the map now that I have kind of a structure going. Uh-huh. So this is stuff that's going to be way easier to do. When I have when I'm using graphic design software. So this is like this will be a stall, right? So there's going to be a bunch of market stalls at that front gate. OK, uh, I actually have no idea. I have an aquarium written down as a thing that this city has, and I have no idea how to draw that. So let's consult the references yet again. All right, so let's get some stuff shifted around. And yeah, for those of you who don't have ADHD. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming out. Uh, tell your friends, and uh, you have a wonderful day. All right. Um, am I doxing myself right now? Maybe. All right. I don't even know if this is going to be helpful. Like, who gets a top-down acquire? Okay, this is not good. This is not useful for me. Yeah, all the aquarium shots are going to be interiors. Maybe we can get a floor plan of an aquarium. Okay. All right, I like this. Yeah, I definitely feel like the aquarium is not that big. Ooh, I like that. So maybe it's got like a main tank that's just like a rough shape and then the aquarium is built around that. Okay, we can work with this. All right. Uh, all right. So these are like Everything else is just going to be like random polygons, but these shapes are going to be like what captures the eye, right? So we can put a little bit more design into these. 
and again, pen and paper is not my favored medium, but for there's nothing better for hashing out ideas, right? Okay, so like this is the shape of the aquarium, right? Let's think about how that would even work. So there's like an aquarium environment in here. So the reason why there's an aquarium, maybe, maybe if I say it out loud, it will make sense. Uh, so the city is a port city. It's connected to the water. There are also undead creatures in the water that sometimes have business on land. They need an environment to stay in. So for them, the aquarium is a hotel. They also charge people to come and look at these weird uh, creatures from the ocean because why wouldn't you? Uh, so there's probably like a patio or like a viewing area. It's, it has to be two tanks, right? Like they have to divide it. Because if I'm paying money to live in an aquarium, I want some goddamn privacy, right? So it's like a two tank structure. And then I feel like the rest is just like built around this shape, right? So this is the visitor's area. So it's got some tables and chairs, right? So is it like, do they cut it super lean like this? So the final shape is kind of like a, um, like almost a heart shape. which would leave room for like a lobby over here. So you go to the lobby, you check in, uh, you go over here to the tanks, and there's like a little meet and greet area. And then like actual maintenance of the tanks slash the facility has to be in here, right? So it's kind of like almost an angular triangle shape with rounded corners. So from the top, it's going to look like this. Okay. And you don't have to put this much work in, I will also say. Like, I could have very easily, if I wanted to, if I was in a hurry, I could have been like, And then like that, like say that's an aquarium. Like as long as it's a unique shape that kind of pops on the map, you've done your job, right? It doesn't have to super make sense. We live in a world with wizards and magic. So I like to think about how it would actually work uh, because that's fun for me. So that's, this is the rough aquarium shape is going to be act octagonal on these corners and then like pointed like that there's two cages inside or two uh different areas and then like if there's a if there's a lock between them they can empty slash like clean the cages separately which seems nice so that's an aquarium let's see what else we got uh hans a spare parts you spare parts vendor for an undead in need Ah, man, what does this guy look like? I know he's got, like, a huge warehouse. It's basically, like, um, like a, a automotive joint, but for parts for undead. I'm trying to fix this camera angle so you guys don't have to look at the bottom of a microphone. All right, how about that? Huh. So, yeah, I feel like maybe there's a... Maybe it's like a really long building. Or maybe it's like a... He took over like a clock tower that fell down. And he's got his warehouse inside of there. That could be good. All right. Oh, yeah, there's a bank. Uh, they probably got, like, columns and stuff. We don't got to think too hard about how 
the bank is shaped necessarily. I think maybe like um, just a little bit of extra spice on a box and then like a circle in the middle because they've got to have some kind of sweet ass dome, right? Otherwise, why even have a bank if it's not dope, right? So this would be the bank. So what uh, if you're just tuning in, what we're doing is creating a legend, uh, which is I have a bunch of places for the players to actually go and interact with NPCs that are going to have like fancier shapes than your average building so that they pop more on the map. They're also going to be labeled, uh, but every little bit counts. Like you want this to be a place that your players want to go, right? So I got a bank. Counting house, as it were. And again, this is not my medium. I don't usually draw. It's just it's way easier to like spitball with pen and paper. Pen and paper, and then uh, once we've got like the design nailed down, I'm gonna go to a vector art program to make it actually look good. So I'm less concerned about that. So we got the aquarium. I feel like the aquarium is definitely going to be at the center of that spiral somehow. Just because they're all Lovecraftian anyway. So it'd be cool if they had like a Cthulhu spiral that they had somehow like managed to build into the city. Or maybe it just built around them. All right. We got a... I don't know what the word is. I guess bookstore. Lex Arcanum. It's like a for-profit library. It's a bookstore. He's not giving away books for free. Uh, it's run by a lich. And I think it's probably it's probably built on an actual library, right? So let's do like a curvy sort of structure to represent it. And maybe a tower. This is less about making something that's amazing on the first try and more about having something that's workable so that you can finish up your map. And then once we get to like the process phase, things start looking very good. Oh, yeah, we got faces and things. <laughs> the rival business. Faces and things. What do we think that business looks like? I feel like it's built into an old mansion. It's run by a Gorgon. So it's got to have like a manor house feel to it. So let's look at some more floor, pl floor plans. This might be this might be a waste of time. I don't know. I don't have any specific plans for them to go to this place. So we're just going to really quick do like a... Uh, Ooh, I like that. Sort of like a U-shaped structure. All right. Yeah, let me know if the music's too loud or if I'm too quiet or any of that. I'm mostly just working through. Figuring out rough shapes for things. Alright, we're making some pretty good progress on this uh, list of places. Oh no, the camera angle got beefed. I wonder if there's something I can stick it on. Eh, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. This is all this is all a very impromptu stream. I want to thank you guys for coming out, but I spent about 30 minutes setting this up, so please let me know if there's any room for improvement. Alright, so the coin purse is like a gambling establishment. It's like a casino that is also a restaurant and a meeting place. Hmm. I guess we can look at some casino shapes. I feel like me Googling casino floor plans is going to put me on a watch list for sure. Hold on. Casino floor plans. I am not a thief. I 
All right. Oh, I like this. It's looking pretty rectangular, though. I like this shape. I don't know what the hell this is, but I like it. All right, let's try and recreate this shape. Where'd my pencil go? Eh. I really am just putting this right in front of the uh, microphone every time. How about that? I'll just talk out of the corner of my mouth. All right, so it's like... Unnecessarily complicated shapes. We can just sort of simplify. All right. So this is the coin purse, and I feel like now that we put some effort into it, I'm com more comfortable being like, hey, this is the seat of power for the local mob, right? For sure, this is where the capo lives. Like, he, ha he owns a casino so that he can launder money. That makes sense, right? All right. Oh, yeah, I added that there are stables. And, of course, we have to draw the Leaky Femur, the classic tavern that keeps coming back in every version of this game. I feel like the leaky femur is a very straightforward. It doesn't look like a lot on the outside because it's literally just a warehouse where undead go drink and fight each other. It's this settings version of oh, what's the name of that place? The salty spittoon from SpongeBob. It's like that, but for zombies. So. Leaky femur. All right. Did I miss anything? Oh, yeah, there's like a journalism outfit. Huh. I don't know what... I guess they would have to have a printing press, right? So they probably have like a warehouse situation. So we already took giant rectangle as a shape. So let's do like a... Um, like an annex... Sort of rectangular shape. And this can be the red letter which is the printing press area. Got that, got that. Oh yeah, we gotta draw a beached whale. That's the whole reason we started this. I also feel like Lex Arcanum might be a little bit out of control. Like this is kind of a crazy shape for a building. So I might adjust that. But. I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, I'm trying to draw a whale. Doesn't have to be very good. It's also unclear whether... That just looks like a ghost. <laughs> that just looks like uh, I drew a ghost from Scooby-Doo. Maybe we can just add some eyes to him. <laughs> no, he's a ghost. All right. Like I said, it doesn't have to be good. All right, so now we have a bunch of places that need to go into our map. So that's what we're going to do next. No, this is the not this is not the right meat market. Hold on. There we go. Here's the one with actual stuff. All right. So we can adjust this a little bit, see if we can't fit a big old aquarium in here. Leak. 
queue for aquarium. All right. All right, let's get our original inspiration over here. Where's my Kowloon Walled City at? Hold on. I got to get the Kowloon Walled City back. I'll be right back. So now we can be about the business of drawing basically roads with buildings. Now we gotta populate. Uh, so let's see here. The other advantage I have is that this city was built from nothing by a bunch of undead, so there doesn't have to be districting. There's no like there's no zoning laws in undead quests. Feel like our L red letter can go down here, right? We've got the aquarium down. Leaky femur is probably going to be right up next to the wall because, uh, like I said, they're real the people who go here are real sons of bitches. And hey, if you build next, if you build your building. And one of the walls is the arm of an undead titan. That's one less wall you have to build. So that's just a fucking net savings that you can pass on to your customers. Uh, let's see here. Counting house is probably going to be... So this is like the... It's not the only bank in the city, but it's the one that people in the market use. So it has to be secure and conveniently located. Right? So... I'm going to say that it's probably right here. So that's the counting house right there. Which makes it uncomfortably close to the gate. But hey, if you're being attacked, if you're under siege, it's probably not that big a deal. You know, they're probably not going after the banks. They're probably just trying to eat you. All right. All right. So we got the red letter down there. Hans of Spare Parts, which is a fallen clock tower. That'll be fun. I feel like he probably doesn't have main road uh, access. So I think he's probably off the beaten path a little bit, right? So this is Hans's little joint. I feel like this is as big as we can reasonably make a clock tower and still have it make sense. So we'll just put an H here for Hans. All right. So the coin purse has got to be where the action is because that's a uh, mob-owned establishment. I feel like right across the street from the bank is probably pretty good. All right, let me just rotate this drawing. God only knows what this structure was before it became a, con a casino. Coin purse is what that stands for. All right. All right. How far do we feel like they dragged a beach whale? Probably like right here. Never drawn a whale before, so fucking bear with me. 
They dragged his whale all the way up here and then built a restaurant inside of it. That is the nicest restaurants in Undead, in this part of the city. Alright, so Lex Arcanum. I think I'm going to bail on the uh, crazy shape that I drew. we got to get some more stuff on this side of town anyway. So I feel like it's a sort of tower structure that's maybe also constructed with magic. Like maybe a donut with like a... Um, like a reading area in the center, probably good. All right. And just to sort of like So we'll put faces and things over here. I feel like the uh, warehouse district can go here, too. Okay. So now we got some, uh, some stuff to work around, right? So we can just start drawing... Uh, I feel like just a couple of long... Comically huge, ridiculously large warehouses. All right, so now we have a bunch of stuff for our players to go through that we can, like, highlight with our graphic design later. And then, for the purposes of this map, we can draw around uh, those places, right? And fill it in with, like, buildings that... Like, people live in, stuff happens, but it's not, like, part of the plot, you know? With a city this large, it's impossible to keep track of everything. All right. So we got, like, probably another road over here. Dude, shout out to Bob Ross. I had no idea that maintaining a train of thought while also drawing a map was going to be as difficult as it is. That motherfucker talks about trees and draws them at the same time. Alright, so let's take a look at our Kowloon Walled City reference material. That makes no sense, right? It would have to be parallel to the warehouses. Anybody else in this stream prepping D&D &D stuff, or is it just me? But before streaming was a thing. You know Bob Ross would be killing it on Twitch. You know it. Oh, man. I think about that a lot. Like, fucking, I'm on the same platform that Joe Mangianello is on for his D&D &D stream. Like, I'm competing with that guy from Magic Mike. <laughs> like, dude, unfair. All right, so this road stops for no reason. And then we have another one over here. spirals all the way around <laughs> I sure hope so ooh dude shrimp, shrimp teriyaki sounds so good right now we've been doing the uh, so there's like pre-made tikka masala sauce that you can buy for $3.50 
You just throw some chicken and red onions in there, and you have chicken tikka masala. It's real good. Like, it's not restaurant quality, but it's not bad. Also, the scale of this map makes no sense, but that doesn't matter. Because the point is not to represent scale accurately, it's to give the people an idea of what the city looks like and where you can go. So wait, gamer share, do you run any games or do you just play? Both are valid, I'm just curious. Yeah, I like how this is looking. Oh yeah, what's it about? You don't have to get super detailed if you don't want. Just for my own, to pass the time. Harry Potter meets D&D meets World of Warcraft? I'd play that. I know nothing about World of Warcraft, but sounds dope. More stuff needs to have wizard schools in it. Like, Harry Potter does not have... J.K. Rowling does not have a monopoly on the idea of a wizard school. Like, that shit is dope. <laughs> I don't know if I like these connecting back up. Hell yeah. In this stream, we ask about and are supportive of all creative RPG endeavors. stretch Ugh. okay oh yeah Yeah, I'm typically very, try to be very accommodating, very, uh, very chill with people's like creative stuff. Cause I, trust me, I know like what that could feel like when someone's like, meh, <laughs> it could be rough. All right.
Yeah, what if we have like a mirrored Lovecraftian sort of spiral here? I don't know if it's going to look good, but it's going to be aesthetically pleasing. That made no sense. The thing I just said was nonsense. See, now you got me curious about this World of Warcraft D&D uh, &D, Harry Potter world. Yeah, Lovecraft is definitely a vibe. I don't... Not a fan of the man himself and the various... Uh, statements he has made as a person i think uh dude was hella racist even in like the 1910s did you know that lovecraft was so racist that in the 1910s other people were like whoa you're racist <laughs> like that's fucking crazy like how how fucking off the chain do you have to be that people in the 1910s were like you need to calm down he wrote some cool books about tentacle monsters that's for sure it doesn't mean we have to respect him as a person, but I will plunder his works. We've gotten to the section of the stream that is just glorified doodling. So like, what's the, um, I don't know, how do, how do I even ask this question? Tell you what, I want to hear about your uh, campaign setting, that gamer share. You can tell me as much or as little as you want, but I'm interested to find out more. I have specific questions, but I'm having trouble articulating them. And I feel like if you tell me more, I might, my questions might be answered. So feel free to, t to tell me all about it or not as you see fit. I should do more streams like this. I'm just realizing, like, my day job is I work behind the counter at a nerd store, and a big part of that... Oh, yeah, I'm on Discord for sure. Um, I'll get you set up with that information after. Yeah, totally fair. I also, like, there's probably parts about it that you don't want, like, necessarily public. I get that. Uh, yeah, I'll send you a DM, and you can let me know. For me, I'm, a, I'm very curious about thematics, if that makes sense. Well, thank you so much. You made the stream a lot better with your presence here. You have a great day. Uh, going off what I was saying earlier, like one of the things I'm most interested about is like thematics. Like, what is the game about at like a top level? Uh, and for the purposes of this undead quest, it's basically the plan is to be like, hey, this would make any sense. Would there be a road along the side of this thing? Or this wall? The plan with this undead quest is to be like, hey, uh, 
where do you draw your personal line amongst you and your friends uh, vis-a-vis injustice? Like, this city is corrupt. It's run by gangs. Uh, You are nominally uh, a watchman. So, theoretically, it is your job to stop that. But that involves risking your own life and limb and position in the city, etc., etc. So, like... Where are you going to draw the line? Like, what's the, uh... What's the end? What's the end, uh... Where, where are the players going to, like, make their stand is what I'm curious about. I feel like this is going to make a good YouTube video, too. I'm just going to speed it up. Like, I'll take the footage from this stream, and I'll make it go, like, a thousand percent speed. Uh, I feel like that will be helpful. I feel like if the leaky femur is this close to the gatehouse, there's probably definitely, like, this is like a military bar. Which is not something I thought about when I was uh, designing the leaky femur and, like, putting it into the world. But that's part of the fun of, like, making these maps is you sort of are forced to think about the logistics of the spaces in the world you are in. Which, if you don't draw a map, maybe you never think about that. You also don't have to think about that. I've run entire games without maps. Maps are not necessary. Like where that is, like where this is at. I feel like this needs some more connectors. I wonder if Cass is going to be mad that I stole his pencil. This is my coworker's pencil. I usually write in pen, but for the purposes of this exercise, it's just not, it's a non-starter. Can't draw a map in pen on the first try. That's crazy talk. Anybody else in chat want to tell me about their world building? That's the mood I'm in today. I think it's just me and Pretzel Rocks, boys and girls. I think there's like 12 robots in this stream and no humans.
Hmm. This area needs something. I don't know what. Let's look at our Kowloon for inspiration. Maybe just a big L? Like, just... Like, just, yeah, there's just an L back here. Some buildings all around here. So, like, this map is basically going to turn inside out, right? So we're going to draw buildings to fill in all this negative space. And then we're going to erase the roads. And the negative space of the roads will be filled by buildings. He said. Hoping. There's also more room up here. I feel like another... This calls for another L shape. All right. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so well, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to take a commercial break. I'm going to take a look around the shop and my to-do list and see uh, what all needs to get done. And then if there's more time for map making, I might just do that. All right, let's take a look. Alright, so you guys are going to be subjected to the empty chair stream while I go take a look at my schedule. Okay, so 
turns out, as much as I would like for it to be the case, I can't just spend the next four hours drawing a map. There's other stuff I have to do. So here's what we're going to do, chat. Uh, I'm going to draw for 30 minutes, and then we're going to end the stream, and I'm going to go do some other stuff. And the roads are pretty much done, so at this point it's just figuring out how to fill these roads with buildings. So we might need to visually enhance this Kowloon Wall City. Or at least make it bigger for me. Got it about as big as I can make it on my screen. All right. I feel like maybe this building goes here. It's an old manor house, right? building like this. I love the idea of a building that you can't even get to. Like, inside inside of these roads, there is a building that's just like, you have to go through alleys to get here. I'm also trying to vary up the length and shape of these buildings. There we go. Check it out. That's like an actual, it's actually coming to life. We're doing it. A triangular building? Why not? Find a building that leans on it for no reason? Absolutely. thing about imaginary fantasy buildings is that you can just have them take whatever shape is convenient for the art you're trying to make. I don't know if this shape super makes sense, so that might be something that we fix in post. But right now we're just trying to crank out these... Uh, motherfucking buildings... Ending up with sweet little alleyways as part of the plan. We can leave a space there. If it's just all visually dense, then I feel like we're missing an opportunity to, to space these out. 
with the alleyways or with the warehouses. I feel like maybe there's more than one or more than three. I don't know how I feel about these two buildings touching in the corner like that. I think it's going to be okay, but it just bothers me. I'm kind of interested to see. I might switch gears and go over here for a bit. What? Alec Capon in the chat with the cheer. Hello. Let me expand the chat so I can see if you're saying anything. All right. Welcome, Allie. We're drawing a map. I feel like I should just put a setting doc somewhere where people can read it. Tell you what, I'll tell you about my D&D campaign if you really want me to. Yeah, how you doing? Also, please don't judge me. I know you draw for a living. I don't. <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> Makes no sense. I don't like this. Hmm. 
yeah, uh, for those of you who are just tuning in, I am doing a rough sketch of a map that I hope to eventually turn into a piece of vector art that I can use multiple, multiple times. Uh, my preferred methodology is obviously computer-based vector art because I don't have to uh, draw good shapes with my hands because that's not a thing I learned how to do. But for the time uh, for the time being, just having it sketched out is uh, how we're gonna do it. I almost wonder if it would be faster to do this step digitally. Like, basically, what I'm doing right now is just filling in the roads with uh, building shapes. So I don't think there isn't a reason why I couldn't do that on a computer something to think about but I'm already here and I'm having too much fun I feel like nobody would build, no one would dare build a shanty town leaning up against the blood orchard, which is this border right here. So I wonder how I'm going to justify that visually. Kind of like playing Tetris. How weird is it going to look if I do it like this? Yeah, that looks good. This is part of the stream that is like mad boring for me. I don't know if it's interesting for you guys or not. But for me, I'm just like, man. That's a lot of rectangles. Can we go back to the part where I was just talking about the cool setting idea and not drawing stuff? Oh. Crazy shaped building over here.
It's starting to come together. I love this <laughs> clock tower that just fell down. <laughs> like, that's my that's my favorite building by far. <laughs> like the the whale carcass is a close second, but the the clock tower that fell down and they just moved in. <laughs> it's too good. Must have been a fucking huge clock tower. Or it's just really claustrophobic. There's probably... I know he has, like, a basement. I'm thinking about this way too hard. I should be drawing rectangles. The guy who owns that clock tower, his name is Hans. He runs a business called Hans' Spare Parts. And this is an undead city, so a spare part is just a body part that Hans can attach to you for a fee. I'm still not sure about this bottom section. Like, I haven't really... So, like, the... And this is me talking it out so that it, I can, like, reason my way to what I think is the right choice. So, basically, like, this bottom part here is actually an interior wall, right? Um, there's a, an orchard called the Blood Orchard back here where vampire wizards do all kinds of crazy magic that they don't let the common people in. So... I guess people built buildings up against that wall, but man, I would not want to fuck with vampire witches for any reason in this setting. So maybe there's just like uh there's like a, the six foot <laughs> don't fuck with this wall zone that is just not drawn on this map and future iterations of the map. This will be a consideration, I'm sure. As far as the connectors go, like, these boundaries on the left and right aren't even really anything. Like, that's just kind of where the meat market ends and Old Town and the Cauldron begin, respectively. So... Don't really know. how that's going to end up working long term I have other questions too like when I vectorize this map am I going to make it all at once like am I going to do the whole undead quest vector map like real big and then zoom in and if I do do that is my computer going to explode I don't know has anyone ever done this before That's the problem with this game, is that cartography is like a real skill. I'm just a jabroni who played uh, role-playing games with theater kids. That's my skill set. I can improvise, but if I can draw maps and shit, I've only done it a couple times. I like that the Alexa, this sort of library circle down here also has some safety space as well for a lich lives there and you probably don't want to fuck with him. Uh, it pleases me that it turned out this way. We got 13 minutes left.
Time to crunch it out. Starting to run out of pencil. And it's just to show what it looks like in this corner over here. So this area over here is pretty much done. So you can see this is like, yeah, once you erase the roads, you get sort of like these sweet shapes that are like suggesting roads while not uh, having roads drawn themselves, which is pretty cool. So pretty much all we have to do is like fill in this space right here, fill in this over here, fill in this over there, and we're pretty much done. But I got to go do other stuff for the shop. So... This, is actually, this stream was super fun. I had a ton of fun talking to you guys. Really happy to talk to anyone who came out. Really appreciate you guys. Really appreciate you guys. And I definitely want to do this again. So it's probably going to happen. We'll see if uh, my players can convince me to run D&D &D instead of just draw maps. Because this was pretty dope. Uh, I'm going to see if any of my friends are online. If I can send a raid somewhere. I've become a lot more selective about raiding. Because I feel like it's kind of a special thing. Uh, so you should take care to pick someone who's going to like appreciate and also benefit from it. So, let's see here. Yo, these are D&Ds online? Hell yeah, we're going to raid with like two people. All right. 